Hello everybody, welcome to uh, What If Germany Won World War One Part 2. Um, part 1 will be in the description, check it out. So, without further ado, let's get into it. More great music. Victory for Germany. Only year long war. Something, the. Something. Something. Something about Hungary. The. Right, the Zetos, say Britain, and French and Russian. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this. I'm still not very good at German yet. Something the make the make the make to a end. Um the official capitulation. Some the Allied capitulation, maybe? I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry, I just really want to read this. Y'all can skip it if y'all want. In this alternate timeline, the German Empire, along with the Central Powers, won the Great War in a stunning victory against the Allies. It was not an easy victory, and it was not a quick one, but it was one which redefined the history of the modern world. Conflict has a way of reorganizing the stage along your own terms. This was seen in our timeline when the Allies forever neutered the Germans and Austrians from European politics. Yeah. The reparations shrunk Germany's economy and territory, making it already fragile once the Depression hit, and the war saw the death of the Austro-Hungarian oh. Empire. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, Austria and Hungary, Austria and Hungary, they both cut like seventy percent of all their land taken away. Imagine if that was Germany. Imagine if Germany lost 70% of their land. Like, that's just insane. They, oh my gosh. They just lost, they By lost now, so much. you probably know the ramifications of this. It was this initial defeat that immediately stopped the Germans' rise to power that had been occurring for the last half century. Yeah. A united Germany under Prussian rule was a formidable force. It wasn't a colonial power like Britain, France, or Russia. But it was still one with growing potential. When the Great War ended... It did have colonial possessions. So, I mean, technically it was a colonial empire. ...and the Kaiser fled. This rise was finished. Germany went down the path of Nazism, which would only destroy it further, and led it into being split between two states for five decades until the 1990s. This was 80 years of mostly subjected to foreign powers. Today, just two decades later, Germany is once again the economic power of Europe. Yes, most powerful economy, second largest population. Great. But it's not difficult to see that a unified Germany probably would have gone down a different path in those lost years. This is part two. When we left off, the central powers are victorious against the Allies. The Russians have been driven to civil war, and due to the territory acquired in the brest litovsk Treaty, which doesn't completely collapse, Germany now is left with a sizable portion of Eastern Europe. You may have flashbacks. Well, there were puppets. There weren't. I mean, it didn't really take it. it really weird. Back to World War II, but keep in mind, it's not like the Third Reich style conquering the East for Lebensraum. As per the treaty agreement, the Russians allow for the birth of new nations and the Baltics and an independent Ukraine as well as the creation of the Kozak and Crimean states as well. The Germans begin the redrawing of the map. While these Baltic and Ukrainian states are technically in... Oh my gosh, okay. map is quite interesting, I would have to say. I wonder why it doesn't... Ukraine has... I wonder why they don't have that land right there. And these borders are a bit interesting. Um, I mean, that would be Lithuania, and then that would be... Estonia and Latvia. Interesting map. Independent. They are loyal to the Germany. And wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't Belarus be independent or something? Economy and the financial system, almost like another entity we all know and love. But these states, all mm. in all, 
are German puppets, with the German minority in each state being the highest class, including the rulers. This is Prussians, after all. Poland never really is discussed, so their future is muddled and probably violent. Speaking of which, the Russian Civil War is still, of course, happening, and plans get muddled in war. It's easily foreseeable the conflict in Russia blends into the plans with the Germans as the conflict spills over. Communists versus non-communists fighting in many areas of Eastern Europe. The stability of Russia is of the utmost importance to the Germans, as a Soviet state on their border is a catastrophe to the traditionalist Prussian culture. The White Army receives vast amounts of funding and support in men to the front lines from almost every Western state, from Britain, France, Germany, and America. With this aid from the powerful German Empire, the White succeed. Wait, why would that be any different from our timeline? Where pretty much all of Western Europe supported the whites. Why would that is that is that because like Germany is more powerful or something? And the Soviets are crushed. The Soviet Union never arises. Which, if you want the full scenario on that, check out this video. Germany, while the dominant army on the continent, was just that on the continent. It was always limited by the superior British Navy. What about their colonial holdings? Wouldn't it have, you know, gained um, a lot of Africa and Papua New Guinea? I mean, in real life, they, they wanted to create Mitchell Africa, where they pretty much just took all of middle, the middle of Africa. And compared to others, always had a lackluster number of... Oh yeah, and also, Germany had the, um, at the time they had the second largest navy. And after Britain was destroyed, like, certainly Germany would have the industry to sooner or later overtake them, right? Oh my goodness. Because, I mean, Germany was pretty close at one point to overtaking Britain's navy. The war, Germany always had the ambition of stripping much of these colonies from their enemies. Had they won, nothing would have stopped this exchange. In this alternate timeline, what we see Something called Middle Africa. Oh. oh, maybe I should just wait next time. Or Middle Africa. The German Empire seizes British, French, and Belgian territory Whoa. all throughout Africa, effectively taking over most of the continent. I don't think they, I don't think they would have taken that much. It was basically connecting the three existing German colonies, allowing for one large swamp of land across the African equatorial jungle and savanna. A direct empire. But an economic dominant force in Eastern Europe is always a possibility. Rebellions would be put down hard. The likelihood of Germany succeeding at such a huge endeavor across so much land is hard to say, as the Germans lost against South Africa in our timeline. The Great War is over, mm. and to the victor goes the peace. But the peace is only won if the victor is competent, which leads us to discuss oh, the black God. sheep of the bunch, the Kaiser. Yeah, I always talk about how I hate Will. Um, Wilhelm II pretty much screwed Germany over in World War One, and he just he relied on his emotions. He was, you know, overconfident and all that. It's annoying, and he hated British people, well, even though Britain was like they had a Germany and Britain had a long history together as being allies. Wilhelm II during the war he was mostly a figurehead. But when he made decisions, yeah. they were usually based on emotion and exactly. harmed Germany in the process. For Germany exactly. to have a successful peace, he would need to figure out the exact role the monarchy would play in this new Germany. The war showed that the Kaiser didn't need full authority, as his generals ran the country effectively by themselves. Mm. So the traditional role of the Kaiser wasn't entirely needed, even if Germany won. It's possible, due to Wilhelm's general incompetence, the German government would slowly begin shifting his power away from the monarchy and into the hands of the military or government. This isn't to say a democracy, but it's a step away from an absolutist monarch. In the West, there isn't so much a cultural change, but a shift in its potential. In our timeline, we went down one path, led by Britain, America, and France. In this timeline, that culture is Germanized. As I said in the oh, last yeah. part, without the defeat of Germany being a nail in the coffin to prominent monarchies on our 
timeline, the legacy of monarchs and empires is less black and white. It, it was just talking about how um, Germany would, you know, spread its influence throughout the world. And... But in real life, um, Germans in America, they were, like, treated badly because Germany was doing some rude things to America. So, maybe we'll talk about them later, but I'm, I'm curious to see what... I'm just curious about that, about what would happen to them. Monarchies prove they can still be semi-relevant in the 20th century. The main change here is Germany's legacy in the world. Before the war, Berlin was one of the main centers of finance, education, and art in the entire Western world. After the war, the legacy of Germany was a nation surrounded. And after Hitler, a nation which was too dangerous to be allowed to continue. But in this alternate timeline, that legacy never exists. With new victories in the East and harsh treaties against the British and French, the Germans set themselves up to be economic masters of this new order. Just as the United States used World War II and the economic boom to spread its own culture across the world, sense. so too does Germany. When you have a victor, though, there are certainly losers. The defeat at the hand of the central powers affects every allied nation differently following the signing of the Treaty of Paris and Treaty of London. I always hear these people talk about, oh, if Germany won World War One. I. I don't know if I talked about this in the last video, but there's all these people that say, oh, France would have pretty much became what the Nazis were, and they would have just, you know, destroyed Germany and did what Germany did in World War Two. No! France... They did not have the population, nor the industry, nor the, like, dense population, nor the, like, they're just completely different variables. It's just ridiculous to say, oh, France would have basically uh, became, became fascist. In fact, it's certainly more likely that they would have became communist. Britain, while bitter, would be quick to adapt commercial ties with Germans. Yeah, they Sections were friends. Still exist, still. However, due to Germany's new influence I mean, trade in Belgium, friends. the British Empire is diminished really. in Africa as the Germans take all of Middle Africa. Among imperialists, this is incredibly horrendous. The French, as well, aren't so forgiving. They would have lost two wars by then with the Germans, and a national call for revenge is prominent. It's likely the Treaty of Paris is harsh, just as Brest Lavosk was against the Russians and new reparations are forced upon the French this time, too. Now, if this seems like just a switch of what happened against Germany in our timeline, not. After the loss Thank against you. the Prussians in the Franco-Prussian War in our own timeline, the French were enraged, and mass anarchy and instability reigned. The Paris Commune... Wait, isn't that how um, France became a democracy or something? ...was one such event where radical socialist troops took over the city France was subject to disaster if it lost another war, which in this scenario, it does. It's likely nationalism and socialism rise in the country as a face what to do with its enemy to the people. No matter what, this bad blood between the two doesn't go away and most likely results in another war. Britain and France would become incredibly bitter after this loss. Speaking of allies, I never discussed Germany's, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottomans. Both countries themselves what about Bulgaria? were the sick men of Europe, and it's unlikely they'd survive they even joined. much longer throughout the 20th century. Yep, we don't care about that. What was most important oh. was how they died. Demographics are a main issue in the area of Ottoman control. Oh yeah, let's just say, what if Germany won World War I? Not if the Central Powers won World War I. The Great War and the decade following saw an incredible population shift in Anatolia. Following the war and the collapse of the empire, oh yeah, Armenian genocide, yay! Empire, the chaos which followed saw a population exchange between Greeks and Turks. In this alternate timeline, the Armenian genocide still occurs. There is deportation, murder, and genocide on a large amount of the population. The Ottoman Empire, a victor in the war, doesn't collapse, at least not yet, and so the Christian minority stays within the region well into the 20th century. Oh. Yet, 
there is still ethnic tension within the empire as its grip weakens. If the empire does collapse, history of ethnic civil war probably stays as it was in our timeline. That's just how it is. As for the Arabs to the south, the Middle East isn't simply divided into artificial states like Iraq or Syria after the Thank war. Goodness. When the Ottomans that was do horrible. collapse, the Arabs unite under larger, more natural states. Our well, that'd be good, you know, today, at least, like, modern day, there wouldn't be as much, um, instability in the Middle East, because those states, they just, it's like they just, it looks like those states were drawn by, like, a two-year-old, seriously, they're just, it's, like, there's just no, there's no thought, there was no thought put into, you know, the ethnicities and all of that, they just do it, they just, Iraq it however they want. Non-existent, and instead is divided between Shia and Sunni Arabs. The Kurds have their own name as well. Wars between the groups still happen, but the stabilization between groups and civil war, like in our timeline, rarely are such an occurrence. Israel simply doesn't exist in this timeline, but there is a much larger Jewish population within Europe, especially, unsurprisingly, Poland. There is never a British Palestine. Never even Hitler. So the Holocaust never forces Jews to leave the land. Could fascism still rise? Possibly, but obviously not in the manner of our timeline. It would be harder having to rise in countries with history of democracy. As a whole, we see a Western civilization far more socially conservative than it was most. Without World War II, which created such a societal shift, generations don't become distant in the old order. Imperial might empire and colonies remain a desire because that was germany's main prize for victory britain and france want their colonies back america wants to be like germany speaking of which oh yeah what is america doing they never got involved in the war and though the american public is largely neutral to a german victory of course being culturally and economically closer to britain meant that while the allies lost was an issue it wasn't catastrophic what's done is done and to the americans Oops. Relationships had to be made with the victors and to mend ties. Being uninvolved in the war, the United States tries to reach across the aisle. It's not a global military leader, but economically it's strong. If the German economic plan worked, then they'd be a valuable partner. Oops. The millions of German immigrants across the Midwest don't have to abandon their heritage so quickly. In our timeline, the reason That's Germans good. assimilated so quickly was because of anti-German sentiment. Oh my God! What happened to him? Jesus Christ. They were discriminating, abandoning their culture to fit in. Without a war, many can continue to speak their native language. Oh yeah, this is like a map of like the major ethnicities. Obviously like um the largest ethnicity in the United States is German. There's more Germans than the other ethnicity. Yet they only, yet um, only about like one million or so speak German in the U.S. And then if you go to like another ethnicity, like for example Italians or French or uh, Mexicans, you see that like they actually are able to preserve their identity. But with Germans, it's like the complete opposite. An entire isolated town. As a result, the United States had a far greater Germanic influence mixed in with its ancient population. Throughout the 20th century, this was one of the substantial Germanic relationships with the new power of the land. Because so much would be shifted by this victory, I can't account for exact specifics going into the rest of the 20th century. Any event could randomly change the course of history, yeah. even if Germany did win. I, I actually I find that fascinating how. One thing could, um, you know, it's a butterfly effect. Just one thing could affect, you know, a, a large part of history. Like, for example, if the, if the Crusades never happened, then Germany would not exist. Why is it muted? As a whole, simply following the events of our own timeline, whoever won the Great War forever shaped the 20th century in their image. Had Germany won, it has an immediate head start on this new age. Its Prussian influence, the economic might, and huge population 
means that the 20th century easily could have been the German the century. century. This new era could look very similar to the old one, as European empires still fight for land. Mentalities remain the same, at least for a little while longer. Even if the Kaiser eventually fell out of favor, Germany still benefits from this war. Even if its allies did not. And perhaps German as a culture is far more influential across the world, spreading three entire continents. Of course, this is simply one scenario, an exercise of alternate history. But it's fun to theorize. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, wait a minute. First of all, before I go into this, what is that supposed to be in the middle at that earth thing? Anyways, um, I wish they would have gone into more detail about, you know, how the borders would have looked. And what would have happened with Bulgaria, for example? Um, let's see what else. Yeah, just mostly the borders. I wish they would have gone into more detail about that. And, you know, in Asia, what would have happened with the German colonies in Asia? What would have happened with uh, Japan and China? Maybe that could have changed? I don't know. No, it's really interesting. Um, I don't think they have a part three. Yeah. But yeah, that was... I like that. That was very interesting. Thank you all for watching. And goodbye.